I'm Sonia and I help people take their power back. I didn't think I would be going live tonight. I just decided to go live and here I am. So come hang out, ask me your questions. While I'm waiting for people to jump on here, I wanted to talk about a topic that keeps coming up and that is kind of giving up on your manifestations slash getting really frustrated with people or not people, but getting frustrated when things aren't going the way you want them to. I keep having people ask me like, what do I do? The 3D isn't doing what I want it to. The answer is you keep going. If something happens in your 3D and it is the opposite of what you are wanting, you keep affirming. Hi, you keep going. As soon as you stop affirming and you give up, guess what? You're the one deciding that it's not working and that you should give up. It all comes back to you, you guys. You guys are putting the meaning to everything. Absolutely fucking everything. So put meaning to everything that is beneficial to you. I know when things seem like they are the opposite of what you want, it fucking sucks. But you're the one deciding that that's what is happening. You don't know how you're going to manifest stuff. You don't know how things are going to show up, so just keep going. Hello to one of the realist coaches. Hi. Frustrated with people. You are right. You were right the first time. <laughs> oh, people, things, you know, whatever. You just keep going. You keep going. I know, I know, I know. I know that's like sometimes feels easier said than done, but I promise you, if you just keep going. Oh, what do you guys want to talk about tonight? Thought I'd jump on here and uh, answer some questions. So let me know what you guys want to talk about. Because that was the only thing I had to talk about was I keep having people asking me questions about Oh my god, the 3D is doing the exact opposite. Why is it happening? And it's like, either because you are wavering and you're manifesting the opposite because you're not focused on what you want truly, or because you're now putting the meaning to it that it's not working. At 62, if I don't keep going... Dot, dot, dot. Is that it? How do you keep yourself awake in terms of realizing and staying in your power? You realize it's a choice and you just keep returning back to the choice. Like, that's it. You realize that it's literally a choice and that's it. What value do you place on spiritual development? Um, I don't know. What do you mean by spiritual development? To me, I have gone on the like personal development and the spiritual development journey. And what I've realized is my entire experience is just what I think it is. So I put all my focus on thinking of things in the way I want them to be. Our destiny, not religion. I think our destiny is whatever you think it is. Like, I don't think there's a divine plan. I think it's just whatever you think. Yeah, agreed. And I also think that if you believe that there's like a divine plan or destiny, like whatever you believe in is going to be proven to you to be true. Can you talk more about bridge of incidents? Have you had rocky bridges before? The bridge of incidents, when most people talk about the bridge of incidents, they're talking about looking backwards. So you got your manifestation and you're looking back at the things that happened to get you there. 
for me, I personally, because I know I'm really on top of my mental diet, I just look at everything as whatever is happening right now is the bridge of incidents. I may not understand it or agree with it or think this is how it should play out, but I'm going to decide that this is me getting what I want because I know that where my focus is, it will be proven to me to be true. When it comes to rocky bridges, I don't... Is every manifestation smooth and am I not a human being? Like, no. Like, I react to the 3D sometimes. Like, you're, you're a fucking human. You're gonna have human responses to shit. You pick yourself up, you dust yourself off, and you move the fuck on. If we miss our SP, it's failing right. Not in the end of it's here. Only if you tell yourself that that's what's happening. If you miss them, that's when you need to be affirming. That's when you need to be telling yourself and doing things, imagining that they are with you. You can literally, the conversation that you want to have with them because you miss them, you can have it in your imagination with them right now, whether you visualize it or just use inner conversations. You're not separate from them. So if you're missing them, you need to go back in your imagination and, and work on that. Is manifesting just thoughts, what you are saying in your mind? It's not every thought that manifests, but it's your dominant, you're welcome. It's the things that you focus on the most. It's your beliefs. So if you start to tell yourself something different a lot, it's going to start changing your belief system and then that's what you're going to experience. And you'll truly, truly believe it when you experience it. What is more important, understanding ourselves and others or ourselves first before understanding others? I think understanding ourselves because understanding ourselves is going to help us understand others because we're putting the meaning to who others are. Everything is you pushed out. Everyone is you pushed out. What are you doing, sir? You're welcome. What is your favorite manifestation principle principle from Neville? Hmm. I would say probably revision, just because he's the only person who really talks about revision, but that concept of not so much like using revision or using the re re revision the way that Neville uses it, but just understanding that you can literally think anything you want about anything and it will change what you experience. So with self-concept, we change it with our, with our positive new thoughts. You change anything with, with your new thoughts. That's what affirmations are, are just thoughts telling you something different. It's just a thought. So if your self-concept is I'm not enough, no one would want me, and that's what you predominantly tell yourself and what you've experienced in the past and what you experience now, um, you're going to keep experiencing that until you start telling yourself I am more than, enough, more than enough, I am always, always chosen or something like that. And you just, when you want to tell yourself I'm not enough, I'm not chosen, I'm not wanted, you got to bring it back to the new story, the new thoughts, and eventually those will take over and that's what you'll start experiencing. Can you tell us who Neville is? We're talking about Neville Goddard. He was a, a mystic uh, teacher of manifestation. He, I think, is the one who coined the term law of assumption. He learned how to manifest from the Ethiopian Rabbi Abdullah in 1933 when he wanted to go to Barbados and then spent the 30s up until his death, I think in the early mid 70s, teaching manifestation and mysticism and all of this stuff. I didn't understand how to manifest forgiveness, so revise it if it just didn't matter to start with. Um, 
yeah, if that works for you, you can do it that way. Um, if you're talking about somebody forgiving you, you could just start telling yourself they forgave you. Or you could revise it in whatever you need to be forgiven for. That never happened. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, that event, when you think of it, I would just be like, that was a bad dream. That never happened. But um, it's up to you um, what is easier for you. If you're talking about wanting somebody or wanting somebody's forgiveness, like you want them to forgive or you wanting to forgive them, same thing. Be like, that never happened. Or you just decide that you forgive them. I was literally thinking about revision. Could you talk about that? How the past doesn't exist. We live in an eternal now. The only thing that exists is now. When you have a memory, it is no different than having a imaginal act of the future but you perceive it as real because you are calling it a memory and telling yourself that it's real your memories we've they've done studies on this like you don't actually remember your memories correctly every time you think of a memory you perceive it differently so the past isn't real the past is whatever you're telling yourself it is right now and if you continuously tell yourself a different story about the past just like with anything else it will change everything around you because everything is whatever you think it is I wasn't sure if that was a correct way to revise there is no correct way to do any of this it's whatever is going to work best for you there are a lot of different ways that people use revision but revision is just thinking of the past in a different way like the way Neville taught revision was to like relive the event and then think of it the way you want it to or something. But you can revise in the present moment. Just when you think thoughts of things from the past, that never happened or it happened this way. Do you have any personal stories about changing the past revision? I don't use, I use revision, but like I said, I don't really use it in like a true revision sense. Um, I did revise, I talked about it on my YouTube channel a long time ago when I first kind of did it, but I had this like memory come up from my childhood and I kind of played with revising it and I still revise it and I did notice like it changed the way I felt about myself now. I've read Bavlov, Bav, Bavlovsky, mainly H. Paul Alice Bailey Garn Gardner as in Gar Gardenian Wiccan. I've never heard of any of those people. Interesting. Oh, let's see. Also, is revision messing with the middle if I'm in the midst of manifesting something? No, revision's just a term that's, everything is just your thoughts, okay? Like literally, everything is what you think it is. So revision is just labeling you changing the way that you're viewing the past. That That's it. That's it. Manifesting for them to forgive me. They forgive me. They forgave me. And shit happens, it wasn't a big deal, thanks. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. That's where it's like, if it's easier for you to be like, oh, that never happened, then do it that way. Or if it's just easier to go from this moment and be like, they forgave me, we're good. Like, it's up to you. Do you know about theos theosophy? No, I don't, because I don't even know how to pronounce it. I wrote a professionally recorded song called Eternal Now. Interesting. You refer to Neville associated with Gardner. Interesting. I'll have to check that out. People were confusing me saying you have to do so many techniques. Yeah, yeah. 
that's the thing. The techniques are all just there to help you focus on things being the way you want them to be. Like, that's... That's what they're there for. So, use what is going to be easiest for you. That's why I brought that up. Got that. Cool, Peter. What's your favorite Neville Lectures books? I'm actually just rereading Neville's books. I've never read or heard like all of his lectures. I've been on a Neville kick lately, but we'll see. I like the, I heard somebody reading part of the um, Pearl of Great Prize lecture. And I'm like, yeah, that I like that. But there's a lot of stuff I agree with Neville. There's some stuff I think... I think the biggest thing with Neville, especially people who are new to Neville, is he's kind of hard to read, especially if you don't know what the hell he's talking about. I know I'm asking a lot, haha, but could you talk about your manifestation journey? My manifestation journey was a fucking shit show. I found manifesting in the beginning of 2018 after like when I was at my lowest point I, some shit went down and I was in a really bad place started going to therapy my therapist was the one who got me in, in, into manifesting not because they were like oh you should be into manifesting but because they were like you should you should do a vision board because I had no idea what I wanted or where I wanted to go or what I wanted things to be like you need a vision board and I'm like the fuck is that I had no idea so I started going down the rabbit hole of the hell is a vision board and why do I want one? Found the law of uh, law of assumption or law of attraction. Did law of attraction stuff into 2019. Was like, I don't understand this shit. So I, at the beginning of 2019, I started working with the law of attraction coach, which looking back, it was more of a law of attraction cult because it was all just, she had everyone convinced that she had all the answers and all of us just relied on her. I first found the Law of Assumption about, what, it was like two years ago. Started questioning my coach. I worked with her for almost three years. And it was in July of last year that I found Sammy Ingram, who's like, it's just your fucking thoughts. And it all started to click and I stopped working with that coach and went full in on pretty much robotically affirming and figuring it out. And now is now. I have a video on my YouTube channel that's like an hour long where I go into a lot of detail in that. Would you tell us your personal SP manifestation? Hmm, not right now. I've manifested a lot of stuff with specific people, but I haven't, I have been very, very, very focused on me and not focused on manifesting an SP. So I don't really have, like I said, I've manifested shit with specific people, but like, Relationship wise, I no. I escaped the clutches of Catholicism. Yeah. Do you believe the law of attraction is what we? Do you believe that the believe the law of attraction is what we are? We attract. I think that's their whole thing. I, there's so many rules. And so much just crap in the Law of Attraction stuff. 
it was bad when I was in my law of attraction days. I never understood what I was doing. I was doing all this stuff that this coach was telling me, which was just their beliefs of like how things worked. And I didn't understand that that's what it was. So when I found the law of assumption, I didn't understand, but they were like, because the thing with my law of attraction coaches is like, you can manifest this, but you can't manifest this and you can't do this, but you can do this. But everything's possible. So I was so fucking confused. And then when I figured out it was my thoughts, I'm like, oh, I can focus on changing my thoughts. And that's when I started to think, to see changes. What about karma? I believe if you believe in karma, you'll experience it. I like the way that Sad Guru talks about it. Basically, Sad Guru talks about karma the same way that Neville Goddard talks about sin. It's you focusing and thinking your old shitty bull shitty thoughts. I agree we manifest what we think. Yeah, that's been my experience. That has been my experience. Is manifestation is it instant? Is there always movements? Manifestation is instant. When you change your thoughts to thinking something different, you are shifting into having that experience because like we were talking about earlier, you're in an eternal now. So that is your experience because that's what you're telling yourself you are experiencing. It doesn't always instantly show up in your physical world, but the shift is instant. And the key is to keep yourself in that experience more than the, any other experience so that it shows up in your physical world. But it is instant and there's always movement because you don't see all the moving pieces. It, I look at it this way. If you're watching, I, I don't know why I go with Lord of the Rings because you got a bunch of different groups of people doing shit, right? If you watched Lord of the Rings, that's all happening in and now. It's all happening at the same time. But if you had each group of characters doing all of their shit at the same time, you wouldn't know what the fuck is happening. And it's the same with when you're manifesting. You don't see everything. You're just experiencing what's right in front of your face. Hi, Sheila. Oh, Goddard. Sorry, I misheard. Yeah. You're good. So if I want my better, my SP to have better hygiene, what would I affirm? That they have amazing hygiene or whatever you would tell yourself if that were true now. It's not about having the perfect affirmation. It's about telling yourself that things are the way you want them to be, however you would naturally think. Hi, Sheila. Random live I see. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm just decided to go live. Like, why not? You're welcome. But yeah, it's instead of focusing on how you don't like this and you don't want it to be this way, what would you be thinking if things changed and they changed right now? Thank you, Sheila. Let's go. But you are very incredibly smart. Oh, thank you, Peter. It was nice talking to you. Hopefully I'll see you again on, on a live sometime. You guys have anything else you want to talk about tonight? Like I said, this was not planned, so I just kind of jumped on here.
Do we imagine the new life, not individual aspects? Oh, Sheila, the puppies, Jax is here and Precious is downstairs. Do you imagine the new life, not individual aspects? I mean, if you want, if you have a bunch of stuff that you want to change, then you can just use a blanket affirmation and that implies that everything is the way that you want it to be. But whatever topic you are thinking of in the moment, you need to be thinking of it the way you want it to be instead of the way that it currently is. Oh, my niece and nephew. Yes. Auntie Sheila says hi, Jackson. If we are wanting to change more than one life area at once. Yeah, the most important thing is that when you are thinking of that area, that you are thinking of it in a way that you want it to be. Because it's not the techniques that manifest. So visualizing your life being the way that you want it to be is great. But then if throughout the day you think of money and you're like, oh, I never have money. Money's so hard to get. And SP, oh my God, they never talk to me. They're never going to be with me. We're never going to be happy. If you're thinking like that, I don't care how much you sit there and visualize. It's not going to change the way you want it to because you're not changing. You're expecting a technique to change your life. The whole point is to change you, to become the version of you that would have what you want. Meaning that you already are telling yourself that SP is so in love with me and I have so much money and all of that stuff. But when it comes to like a technique part, if you're going to do like affirming, you can just tell yourself something like, isn't it wonderful? I have everything I've ever wanted. Something like that. What do they mean by circumstances don't matter? That means that anything that is happening in your life or has happened in your life, circumstances, oh, well, that happened, so this could never happen, don't matter. The only reason that it's holding you back is because you're putting your attention on it and telling yourself that it's holding you back. You can also make an affirmation track that covers every area. That's another way to do it. I'm supernaturally abundant in all areas of my life. That's that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, circumstances, anything happening or has happened or you think might happen, it only matters because you're putting your attention on it and telling yourself that it matters. So if you drop that and tell yourself it doesn't matter and I have what I want and can get what I want... That's all manifestation is, is where is your focus? What are you telling yourself? That's it. A master manifester, exactly. Exactly. And it's important to tell yourself that kind of stuff as well. If you constantly are telling yourself, I don't know if manifestation works and I'm not good at it and I don't know what I'm doing, you gotta change that shit. You got to change that shit. I just saw someone come in here that said Alan Watts. Interesting. Interesting. 
I like listening to Alan Watts. You want to see this happy dog? Ugh. He's like, I'm super happy. Have to make you a mod. I mean, bots. <laughs> I make me a mod so I can remove the mods. <laughs> I will have to do that. I don't know. Can I do that while we're live or do I have to do that when we're not live? He's very comfy. I can. Okay, I'll have to play with this. Uh, why do some people not get their manifestation if nothing can ruin it? Because of them. The only thing standing between them and what they want is them. So it is their... They're wavering. They, they aren't changing them. All right, there you go, Sheila. But yeah, the reason that you don't get manifestations is because of the way that you... So they gave up type of thing. Kind of that. It could be that they gave up, but it's... It's all based on your dominant thoughts and your belief system. So if you're not changing you and really doing the work, a lot of people, and I've had this experience, so it's not like a judgment, but a lot of times you, you feel like you're on top of your thoughts, but you're not as on top of your thoughts as you think you are. And when you're not as on top of your thoughts as you think you are, and you're actually spending more time in a state, an overall state of not having what you want, it's not going to work. And like I was talking at the very beginning of the live, a lot of people don't understand that they don't control the how. And so they're doing everything right and then something happens in front of their face and they look at it and go, this couldn't possibly be me getting what I want so it must not be working. And they quit. They don't just keep going, realizing that they don't control how they get it and they don't know how they're going to get it, but somehow what is happening is them getting what they want. Should we react in the 3D like cut off SP, block ignore, etc. or no because we create that unfavorable version and everyone is you pushed out reflecting us? When it comes to what you're doing with US, your SP, you need to do what you need to do. Do you need to set a boundary? Do you need to block them? Do you want to block them? Like, do what you need to do. But up in, in your head, you need to be focused on having things the way you want them to be and having what you want. But as far as what you need to do in the present moment, you can do whatever whatever feels good to you. You're welcome. You're moving too far away from me, sir. He's like... I'm just going to keep rolling just a little further so mom will get off the stupid phone. <laughs> At least he's sitting with me. Usually when I go live, he'll sit with me for a while and then he just like wanders around acting really mad. Like, oh, what are you doing? You're supposed to be spending time with me. He's manifesting you getting off. <laughs> I, I believe it. I believe it. 
If you guys don't have any more questions, then I will get off. But if you guys have more topics you want to talk about, have you ever manifested anything being nervous? Uh, yeah. I, when I first found and really understood manifesting, I was a fucking disaster area. But I still got things to manifest. Because it's not your... Um, your feelings that manifest it's your thoughts so when it comes to being anxious the thing I wish I would have found was uh, different types of nervous system regulation I wish I would have known more about energy work and um, like working with your vagus nerve and things like that to help calm your body down you got to remember your body's in the 3D. So if you start changing your thoughts, it's going to take a second for your body to catch up. You can just affirm through the anxiety and it'll get better. But if you need to find something that will help your body calm down, there are things that can help you do that. Yeah, Sheila, Sheila has also manifested through anxiety. You can do it. Do you believe in BBLs? I mean, some manifestations you'll get birds, sometimes you don't. I've had plenty of manifestations where I didn't have a single sign or nothing, and then things just shifted. So, I personally, I did a video that I posted recently on here about how I don't pay attention to that shit. I like how Sheila does it. She will affirm when she sees birds or signs or synchronicities. I'll either do that or just ignore it because I got into the cycle of just manifesting signs and that sucks. No, oh, thank you for the follow, Amy. How do you know you're on the right track? You focus on... Pay attention to where your thoughts are. If you take even an hour of your day and you stop trying to focus on any kind of techniques or trying to shift your focus in any way, what are you dominantly thinking about in that time? If it is most mostly you getting what you want or it's easy for you to focus on having what you want, then you're doing it perfectly, let the rest go. But if most of the time, most of your day, you're whining, bitching, moaning and complaining, the law is always working. Yeah, I agree. You'll know. Thank you. You're welcome. But it's all mindset. It's all where is your focus the majority of the time? Do you come back to telling yourself that things are the going to be or are the way you want them to be? Or do you focus on other crap? And it's not that you can't be human, it's just um, how much do you come back to it? Thank you guys for the shares. One more question if that's okay. Yeah, go for it. I think about my desires all day. Is that okay? I can't help it. That's perfectly okay as long as you are focusing on it in a beneficial way. That's the key. It's not that you're thinking about it. That's the problem. It's how are you thinking about it? And that's where, for me, robotic affirmations was really helpful, especially in the beginning, because it helped me keep, especially when I was really anxious, helped me keep my focus where I wanted it to be instead of on other shit. I got to a point where I felt indifferent about SP a couple weeks ago, but I partied the last two. <laughs> That's okay. It's like, it's, as long as you are telling yourself that things are going to be good or are good, you're doing it right. You may feel indifferent. You may not. You may get to a point where you're like, I don't really give a shit anymore. And I'm just like, I know it's done and things are good and that's awesome. And if you don't get to that point, then that's okay too. But because you never know when things are going to change and when things are going to show up 
or how they're going to show up. You, The only thing you have control over is this. It's like what Neville Goddard said. You have the free will to choose to think whatever you want and that is where your free will ends. Past that, it's going to unfold however it unfolds. And just because you weren't thinking about your person or your manifestation doesn't mean it's not working. It's where is your focus when you are thinking about it the most. What energy am I attracting? I don't know. What do you think about most of the time? Because whatever you are thinking about the most of the time, how you think about things is what you will experience. I have this feeling we will speak again, but the two things he needs to forgive are pretty huge. The only reason they're huge is because you're telling yourself that they're huge. Update when it happens. Awesome. I look forward to it, but they're, it's only huge because you decided it is. It's a circumstance. It doesn't matter. The only reason it matters is because you keep telling yourself that it matters. Oh my God, this happened. They'll never forgive me. It was really huge. I'm, it's unforgivable. You have to let that go. If part of it is like you need to do some forgiving yourself in order to let it go, then that's what you need to do. But if you move past this, it wasn't huge. It was shit happens. It wasn't a big deal. He forgave me. Exactly. Thank you so much. So true. You're welcome. Yeah. See, sometimes you don't catch yourself on your own crap, but that's. It obviously wasn't that big of a deal because they forgave you. I remember hearing a story, I don't remember whose success story this was, but it was somebody somewhere. I remember they had a client or somebody tell them that they revised a breakup and it was like a nasty breakup where the person was like, I never want to see you again. I hate you. Something like that. They revised it and the person started texting them and being like, why aren't you texting me? And they were like, what? And they're like, we had a fight and the other person was like that wasn't a big fight what do you mean we had a fight it's like you just told me you hate me and never want to see me again like what yeah you never know how things are going to change or what people are going to come back at you with but oh wow so completely revised the breakup yeah that never happened we never broke up we never broke up and you don't go doing stuff in the 3d to be like You know, it's all up here and you let the rest unfold. But like I said, whichever way it's easier for you that we we never broke up. We never broke up. I don't know what you're talking about. We never broke up or they forgive me. We're so happy together now. It's the same. It's the same thing. It's just going about it in putting your focus on a different thing. I'm so sorry, but I don't recall that day. Exactly. We never fight. We never broke up. What are you talking about? We've always been happy together. We've always had a perfect relationship. That's another way to use revision is just put always into your affirmations. We've We've always been happy together. Yep. But don't get caught up on, oh, am I revising it or just however, when you're thinking about it in the moment, are you telling yourself that it's all good or are you focused on that there's a problem? That's it.
You are silly, mister. Anybody else have any questions tonight? Because if not, I am going to hop off of here. I'll give you guys a couple minutes to ask any last minute questions. Thanks. Heaps of answering and discussing. It's helped a lot. Good. You're very welcome. M Michaela? You're welcome, Michaela. I'm glad it was helpful. I look forward to your success story and telling me that it worked perfectly. Because you got this. You're a master manifester. You always get what you want. shocked that you have just stayed over here this whole time, sir. Love that. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. This dog. All right, guys, it has been super fun hanging out with you. I Like I said, I'm going to start coming live on TikTok more. I'll let you know what that looks like. Thank you guys so much for watching. Love and light.